Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen Too Long Didn't Read. We have a load of updates for Star Citizen Alpha 3.12 features, capital ships turning up, Chris Roberts talked about permadeath, medical gameplay and loss in a Calling All Devs episode, and we're going to quickly summarise the news from the last week of October 2020. So let's start with roadmap updates. There are various new features for Alpha 3.12 that have been added to the roadmap, mostly related to the improvement of Stanton security. So with the release of 3.12, a Navy Idris will be a final line of defense at space stations in the game. Should criminals with a high enough combined criminal stat enter an armistice zone, a Navy Idris will be called to deal with them. There are various associated features with this. Capital ship combat behavior improvements focusing on maneuvering, targeting, and weapons. This involves ensuring the ship has full awareness of its loadout, available turrets, and the size and number of combatants it's facing. The pilot will react and position the ship accordingly based on the combat scenario given. Capital ships, turrets and torpedoes, VFX and sound effects improvements. Um, so you're going to see improvements to the destruction, death masks, turret firing, missile trails and torpedo visuals and sound effects to enhance the look and feel of combat against and the destruction of capital ships. So these big ship fights, they should look very pretty and be very cool is the idea. AI fire mode usage and target priorities will allow ship AI to charge weapons and use several fire modes and rates of fire effectively against the most appropriate target based on the weapon they are using or the turret they're using to track a target. So smaller weapons and smaller turrets will be trying to shoot fighters, whereas the larger um, caliber weapons might be trying to target medium and large ships um, if sensible. AI intercepting torpedoes is going to be a thing, making the torpedo gameplay more challenging and realistic and scoring hits more rewarding. Shooting down incoming torpedoes will help defend capital ships and gunships from bombers. AI accuracy convergence is here as well, allowing for more believable accuracy that rewards players for taking evasive action. Countermeasures version 1.1, they're going to have an amount of deployed countermeasures playing a much more important role in the chances of spoofing missiles. Single countermeasures will be less effective, but players will have the ability to choose how many should be fired with each burst. Different missiles will have varying degrees of countermeasure resilience. Torpedo attack, counterbalance and behavior. They're going to have a big rebalance of the size 9 torpedoes, which are now much deadlier. I mean, they're, they're a huge torpedo, they should be. So only a few direct hits um, will be we required to bring down large ships. This extra damage comes at the cost of speed, however, affording the opportunity for ships to counterattack by destroying them. So you will be trying to shoot these down. So all of that together is basically Navy Idris in 3.12. Also now in 3.12 as well is the new mining UI. We saw this mining UI recently. This update adds a brand new um, user interface for all mining capable vehicles which will provide the player with a cleaner overall view of their cockpit and what's going on with their HUD. You'll have a huge amount of information available to you at a glance. You'll be able to see what's in your cargo pods. You'll be able to jettison uh, volatile cargo. You'll be able to see uh, what cargo is volatile. You'll be able to see your mining consumables and any timers associated with them. Have they been activated? Your flight UI is going to be visible while you're mining as well. It's all much more sensible. The law system V2 uh, surrendering has been removed from 3.12, though it's not a huge loss at this stage. I suspect that will return in 2021 when some of the other bounty hunting and security updates will be coming with that as they seem to be focusing on that quite a lot. Let's move on to calling all devs death of a spaceman and do a quick summary of this. Chris Roberts talked about mortality and medical gameplay. The Death of a Spaceman gameplay has evolved a little since Star Citizen's original concept, but it's a core pillar of the game, risk, reward, and death. They want the economy and value of ships and items to help uh, be driven uh, where possible with loss. When you die, die, you'll make a new character and you'll get the assets of the previous one, but there will be death taxes that will be high enough that players will want to avoid them by not dying and it will drive their actions. They are expanding out what happens when you take fatal damage in the shorter term or midterm. Uh, downed characters will uh, be able to get field medicked or otherwise revived where they fall. Characters will be able to use things like the medigun that they're currently working on to get another character back up. If you don't get picked 
moved up or you take a lot more damage, you'll get spawned back at a hospital, clinic or appropriate medical facility. You've basically had to be cloned is the idea and you can go back to where you died and see your body. It's a solution for getting around dropping your gear and being looted and stuff is that you spawn as a clone and then you can go back to where you died and see your body and loot your body if it hasn't already been looted. This is very similar to EVE Online where there are clones. You, you are basically are a clone. However, your DNA in Star Citizen will get less stable the more you're cloned. If this happens a lot, then you won't be able to be cloned again and you'll have to make a new character. They are going to be expanding out the player status system and medical gameplay. You'll see drugs like stims for different effects. Medipens are going to be a quick temporary health boost to get you back on your feet rather than a proper permanent heal. You'll see more gameplay associated with environment and status affecting your character. You'll be able to receive wounds that can get worse. Light damage to a leg could become a broken bone and actually become a destroyed limb if you don't treat it or you take more damage to the same area. Treatment for injuries will tie directly into the amount of damage that you have taken, so that's obviously going to have a time and cost associated with it. Medical care and rescue are very much going to be their own gameplay loops as well. We're going to start to see more of this medical gameplay coming in 2021, it seems. They are working on medical facilities and drugs currently. These gameplay elements will continue to evolve and grow as they develop them and as Cloud Imperium get feedback. I actually quite like the idea of clones, but then I used to play a lot of EVE Online. In Star Citizen, I'd like it if you didn't have to make a new character or it was an option to not make a new character when you die die maybe you could potentially pay a lot of money to get a new stable clone prime or something but keep your original character maybe you still get all the death taxes or whatever but you don't have to go through the process of building a new character you just well i'm my own cat old character i just had to go through a radical uh, operation or spend a load of money or i'm in debt or, or something like that I also really like the idea of seeing characters, older characters maybe, that have taken loads and loads of battle wounds, clearly, but haven't died yet. So maybe they've got loads of scars and things like that. I, I, I like the idea of battle scars. It's kind of cool. Uh, let's move on uh, quickly to the newsletter. It's Halloween and the last chance to get the October um, Star Citizen masks. So bear that in mind um, if you're trying to get the uh, Vandal mask by getting 50 unique kills or if you're trying to get the creepy Benny Henge mask by visiting that location then you'll need to do it ASAP. You can also buy the bear heads uh, as well. Um, also the Mercury Star Runner is in polishing and should be going to Star Citizen Alpha 3.11.1 or that branch shortly between now and the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo it seems. Uh, it's also the last chance to get uh, involved with my Mercury Star Runner October giveaway although we probably will be giving another one away in November. Comment on any of my videos made during October to be in for a chance of winning that. The Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, the big ship sail and expo um, with free fly event going on with it, uh, will start on the 20th of November and run through to the 2nd of December. The sneak peek this week was of a refinery deck that's coming in 3.12. The RSI subscriber, Jump Point Magazine, looked at law improvements, or improvements to the law system, I should say, and space station defences that came in 3.11 and sort of like some little plans uh, for the future. The Origin 100 series and the Eclipse as well, but also it it teased the next RSI subscriber flare, which appear to be nerf guns. Yeah, little dark guns, pew pew, and um, which I think will be very cool and very silly. The official inside Star Citizen from the 29th of October had um, ship UIs. Um, they looked at that. Basically, they're going to overhaul all the ship UIs to push them into these sort of like um, more final look. And um, the, at a glance, they look extremely cool. And they have a huge amount of information going on, which I don't think is too cluttered. Um, but some people have suggested that it is. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, I suppose, down to personal preference. So it's got like the addition of an emissions gauge and a compass as well here. But loads of your flight information is now just quickly and easily accessible. They're working on the Aegis HUDs and MFDs at the moment first. And then we'll move on to more uh, per manufacturer. Ship pipe system or the resource management system was also talked about. So... Um, it's still a long way out, but basically your physicalized components will actually uh, move the 
power and fuel around the systems that need them. Fuel's converted to power, power will feed into the systems that need them, and then there's relays that sit between components that provide more connections, and then redundancy and different pathways around a circuit so that you can get uh, power uh, around to more systems. Though you might not want all your relays on at once because they cost power themselves and therefore fuel. Batteries are also components that will store power and they'll be used if the system can't get enough power from other sources. It'll be interesting to see how this system merges with subcomponents. Maybe you'll be able to get a little tiny battery subcomponents, which will give you um, the, the component itself have a little battery store or, or something like that. Very, very cool stuff going on there. And that's sort of it for this week. The features for 3.12 could have clearly been compressed into a single card uh, when it comes to capital ships. But the fact we're getting capital ships, the interest to fight um, it is great. Uh, it's something I've wanted since the conception of the game. The death of the spaceman, I think the plans for mortality in Star Citizen should evolve a little further, and then they'll probably be pretty close to what I want. But again, it's going to be very much what you want out of those mechanics, what do you think they should drive, how do you want the game to be played, is going to influence the way you see that mechanic at the moment. But I'm very interested to know what you think. Are you excited by the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo coming at the end of November? and the Mercury Star Runner coming very soon. Are you um, looking to pick up anything? What do you think of the Idris turning up to fight or protect you in 3.12? Are you excited or concerned about Death of a Spaceman? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway for October 2020. It is for a Mercury Star Runner. This highly anticipated multi-role ship is going to be great for small to medium-sized crews that want to do uh, a bit of everything, whether that be cargo running, data running, missions, combat, smuggling, all that sort of jazz. And it's going to be in-game and flyable very soon. All you've got to do to be in for a chance of winning one is comment on any of my videos made during October, including this one. More details down below. What am I shilling for today, I hear you ask? Do you hate it when people steal all of your money and your house over the internet? I know I do. NordVPN may have been invented by wizards to help protect your personal data from the prying eyes of the dark web, a sinister cabal of technomancers that grow in power the more they know about your browsing habits. The true story of NordVPN's origins are unknown and lost to the ages, and without using facts. No one really knows how it provides more accessibility to otherwise censored websites or a safer security experience for all that use it. All I know is that it does and that when you sign up to it, the power level of my bank account grows and I use it and maybe you should too.